What's up, ladies and gents? Excalizors here, bringing you some domination on a launch. I will be using the commando with the grenade launcher attachment, and I have a law secondary. It's got to do my part for the team. Um. Anyway, what's up, guys? How is the Black Ops treating you? Me, it's not treating me so well because matchmaking has decided to not work. And I, I don't know how it is for you guys, but I have been constantly playing 3v4 grids and 4v2, 4v2, you know, whatever. Uh, yesterday I had a nice 6v3 summit game where the game decided that we didn't need more teammates until we were down uh, 130 points. And to make things even even better, we were playing against a party of five, and they were all using ghost and silencers, and it really was not a fun experience at all. Honestly, I probably should have just rage quit it and saved myself the heartache, but I am one stubborn moron. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, the matchmaking. This is one of the, actually one of the few games where it was a full 6v6 for the majority of the game, and when people left, they were actually replaced. Is that I, it's one of, I don't understand. Like matchmaking was one of the few things that worked consistently in the other Call of Duty games. Like if someone left, you could count on someone replacing them within you know a couple of seconds, and you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. But I don't I don't know what Treyarch was thinking when they were designing this. Like I get like I understand no one wants to load into a game that that is uh, down like 130 tickets like I really doubt the two people who joined us in that 6v3 I was talking about were happy that they loaded into our game but you know the, a lot of people do quit it's like they didn't benchmark the other Call of Duty games to see you know how often people quit and all that great stuff and you know go from there they just kinda said you know hey people don't like joining in progress let's put a limit on how many people can join and then after that it's closed off for good I, 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 I don't know what it is. I, I honestly don't know what is it. Hey, surprise, bitch! <laughs> gotta, gotta watch the, watch the ledge you're camping on there, friend. You know, people like to uh, drop down when people are on the flag. But it, it, it seems like I don't. It can't be just the joining session in progress because when you're sitting in the lobby, nothing happens. Like there's many a time when I will load up into a lobby by myself, I'll have hosts. I'm like, oh hey, I have hosts, so I better stay in here so I don't lose that because host advantage is amazing. If you do not ever get host advantage, I, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I really do. It is a huge, huge, huge advantage in this game. Always has been, always will, as long as they decide to do P2P style hosting. I mean, all we can hope for is that they implement dedicated servers, but unless PC gaming becomes the norm it's not gonna happen and we know that's not going to happen but you know that I'm not gonna get into the console versus PC debates it's uh, not really important stupid but whatever's whatever's and I just the matchmaking I, I you know I'd be a lot higher rank if it wasn't for the consist constant 4v3s that I play 4v3 villa that's a, that's really fun by the way uh, I've seen some comments asking me, well, hell, well, hey, x how do you level up so fast? Uh, I do average a good 310 score per minute in Domination. That's pretty much all I play. Sometimes I hop into Team Deathmatch to do the contracts that give experience like TDM Massacre, TDM Bloodbath, whatever. It's the only time I play TDM unless uh, Rusty wants to play some TDM, you know. But mo for the most part, I do play... Dominate. Actually, for the most part, I do play Domination. That's all I play. I did try to help Rusty get Marathon Pro, and the four other teammates decided it would be more beneficial to sit and spawn all game and try and defend the flag, and defend the flag they did not. I don't ever want to play CTF ever again. Oh, it's going to be fun when I decide to stop prestiging and get Marathon Pro. I'm not looking forward to that at all. God, that was a disaster. But, anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, how I rank up so fast. Uh, I think it's pretty much, I do get my fair share of kills each game. The average of maybe 30, 35 kills per game would probably be in the 40, 40 area if I actually played full 6v6s more often, but I don't. Hopefully with the next patch that they release that it will be all fixed and 
we'll all have happy 6v6 games. We can only hope. But and I do get a fair amount of kills, and I think a lot of it is with the kill streaks I run. I run a 3, 4, 8 setup, UAV, counter UAV, and Blackbird, and you know, usually when I play, usually with each life, I can I guarantee my team at least UAV. You know, I can die 10 times, I'll give my team 10 UAVs. Actually, probably not, but uh, it's more along the area of like maybe 7 or 8. You know, I'm pretty adept at getting two kills, and if you, you really want to be uh if you really want to make sure you get the two kills, use explosives and play domination. And uh, most people, they do not use the flak jacket, and I will punish them for that. And when I use this setup, I use flak jacket myself so that they can't counter noob to me. If they want to noob to me, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna have to shoot me. Ah, flak jacket's amazing. I love it. I love it. But. If you, if you really wanted to like sit down and grind out some levels and get lots of experience, you could run a hard line with a 3-4-5 setup, and if you're good at getting those kill streaks, that's a lot of experience you'll get from calling in those kill streaks. You get 100 for UAVs, I think 150 for counters, or maybe it's 100. I don't really pay, pay attention to it. But and I think maybe 200 for napalm or something, I, I, I don't know, or maybe you want to use care packages and try your luck with that, you know. Low kill streaks and hard line will net you a lot of experience and, you know, the better you are at the game, the more experience you'll get out of it. And, you know, I don't use that setup, the setup I do for experience, it's just kind of a, like a bonus, but... You know the, the reason why I, I don't use I like to, I don't use the lethal kill streaks is because honestly they're really inconsistent. Like sometimes you call in dogs and they'll get 15 kills. Like whoa man, dogs are awesome! And then you call it in the next round and they get one kill. You know that's a complete waste of an 11 kill streak when you could have probably had a lot more benefit from something like a counter spy plane. And people do not like to shoot down the counter spy planes, UAVs, and all all that stuff. It's weird. They 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 hear the chopper gunner incoming, and before the guy opens the door, the kill streak has been shot down. And like I said, that's a waste of a nine kill streak. It the lethal kill streaks they're really effective when they work, and when they don't, it's just like what the hell, man. That was a complete waste. So I, I prefer fire and forget. I prefer kill streaks that require no input from me. That's why I preferred the Harrier Pavlo setup in Modern Warfare 2 as opposed to you know running the Harrier with AC-130 or chopper gun or whatever it's just really iffy I mean it depends on the people you're playing against if you're playing against people who don't want to shoot down chopper gunners and gunships then by all means go for it probably get a fair amount of experience because that will will get you a lot of kills but be, be careful on uh, what maps you pick those on because you know on a map like Summit, it is definitely, the chopper gunner is definitely not going to rate face like it would on a map like jungle or firing range, so. Oh, voice cracked, it's a good way to end things. <laughs> so that's pretty much how I level up as fast as I do. I do like to run hardline a lot, and when I do that, I pretty much guarantee my team counter UAV and UAV each time I die, so. It's a good 250 experience for each time I die, and the more I die, the more kill streaks I call in, the more experience I get, so on and so forth. Uh, contracts, they don't really play a part in the mountain of experience I get, but it does help. I'm actually quite adept at completing the 16 headshots with weapons challenges, I mean, except I stay away from the sniper rifles, but... Hey, who doesn't stay away from the sniper rifles, right? <laughs> but anyway, that is game 51 and 2 with 4 flat caps, 5 defense, I think. So, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and peace soup.